Welcome to Talking Kootenai Books. I'm your host, Keith Powell. Today our guest is Steve Terzmetti. Steve, you're based out of Kimberley, and I would describe you as a, an adventurer. You uh, really spend a lot of time in the mountains and the outdoors here in the Kootenays. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about some of your adventures? Yeah, I try to get out as much as I can. That's the nice thing about living in this neck of the woods. It, everything is out your back door, and the, uh, the opportunities to play in the mountains really are endless. Um, I've, I've had everything from quick short days with the kids to, uh, to a 24 day expedition to traverse the Purcell Mountains uh, from Kimberley to Rogers Pass. So I guess that one would be the feather in the cap, but uh, uh, it, it really is, uh, there's, there's so much to do out here. There's so much to see all year round. Right. So uh, what is it that you admire so much about the Rockies and the fact that you're sort of right in the middle of them? Oh, I just, I, I, I love the mountains. I was born and raised in the mountains. My parents started me backpacking from a very young age and it's just something that's stuck with me my whole life. Uh, we've got two kids now and, and we're pushing them to kind of do the same, to get outdoors and appreciate nature and, uh, and, and give back to our communities. Excellent. Steve, the reason that we have you here today is that you've authored a new book. Uh, this is actually your second book. The first book I understand that you put out was really like Climbing Roots of the Kootenays. I believe it's called East Kootenay Rock. Is that correct? Yeah, East Kootenay Rock is a guide to sport climbing in the East Kootenay. Yeah. Uh, so these are, these are cliffs and, and cragging areas where, where people will climb single rope length routes generally. Um, and it, it encompasses 400 routes through the Elk Valley, the East Kootenays, and up, up to the Windermere area. Um, so that was, that project actually started after the Waterfall Guide did. It just mm -hmm. happened to wrap up a little bit quicker than, than the Waterfall Guide did. Okay, so East Kootenay Rock. Um, how active is the climbing community in the valley? It's growing quickly. Climbing really isn't a fringe sport anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it used to be. It used to be these dirt bags hanging out in their vans in, uh, in the far corners of, of the woods. But with, with climbing becoming uh, a, a sport in the Olympics, we have climbing gyms in, in every town and every city now. Uh, climbing really isn't on the fringe anymore. It's becoming a very mainstream thing. So uh, we, we'll, we'll see people learn how to climb indoors and then quickly progress uh, to, to climb outdoors. And, and as we've seen the climbing community grow and the amount of roots and development in the area, uh, there was a need to update our to update the guidebook. I see. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to put you on the spot and ask you: Do you have a favorite climb? My favorite climbs are higher up in the mountains, uh, more of the alpine style climbing. Mm -hmm. it, to to pick one, to pick one is really really difficult. Uh, the Bugaboos are my favorite place mm -hmm. to climb, um, mm -hmm. especially for the alpine routes. And and there's there's some great world-class routes up there on, mm -hmm. on the Bugaboo Spire, on, on the Pigeon Spire, and so, but to, to pick one would, mm -hmm. would almost be unfair. Yeah, well, and, and the Bugaboos have so much climbing history associated with it as well, it's just a, a tremendous location. So the reason, I, again, that we have you here is uh, for your new book, and that's uh, Waterfall Hike, Steve. Uh, a tremendous accomplishment. You Thank recently you. recently put that book out, and I understand it's uh, peaking on the BC bestseller list. So congratulations uh, uh, for that achievement. I, I just wanted to ask you, what was the inspiration behind the book, and uh, we'll we'll explore why people love waterfalls so much in a minute as well. Sure. Well, that the concept I can't really take credit for. I I got the idea of a waterfall hiking guide from uh, from a friend of mine, Adam Sawyer. Uh, from the from the Seattle area, who's written guidebooks uh, to hiking waterfalls in Oregon, Washington, and Idaho, and has since updated his Oregon guide. Um, as I looked around and had started my foray into the to the writing world, quickly found out that there really wasn't a, a waterfall guide. Mm -hmm. I, great idea, um, and obviously with mountains everywhere around here. Uh, felt like a really good fit to to do a book like this in, in BC. I, I think it was a pretty natural fit. At, at the same time, uh, we were trying to get our two young children hiking, 
and found that a lot of the guidebooks um, that are published and even the guidebooks in the area, there wasn't a lot there for young families and young children. So I, I thought I could take Adam's concept of the waterfall guide, apply it not only to our region, but also make it family friendly and, mm -hmm. and give, give young families with small children uh, just that extra piece of information for you know, how to start our kids into hiking when, when the other options are, are, are longer day hikes or backpacking um, to, to give them, them something to do too. Yeah, so you, I think you really did that, that throughout your book and that's something that stood out in my mind is that you talked a lot about you know, family friendly hikes and, and, and waterfall, and the hikes into waterfalls seem to be pretty uh, uh, friendly to a lot of, uh, you know, so even novice hikers, uh, that, that kind of thing. So uh, it's a nice way to expose people to the outdoors. Yeah, I mean, it was certainly the focus, and, and not, that, not that the book will only appeal to families with young kids. I think, I think there's a lot of people that are, are, whether it's photographers or, you know, people that can only manage a, a, a shorter day hike or a half day hike instead of, you know, these longer outings or overnight outings. Um, so it, it really, I think, will appeal to a broad cross-section of of the, the outdoor community or people looking for a way to get outdoors that, that haven't really played around with it yet. Um, mm. It kind of gives them that, that foot step, that first step to take and in, to getting outside and, and Okay, so great introduction to the outdoors and sort of a reward at the end because if you arrive at the waterfall, that's sort of what you're looking for, right? Well, and for kids especially, <laughs> that's, that kids need to be rewarded yeah. and, and they need you know, for lack of a better term, they need that kind of more instant gratification. Right. Uh, so. So to have a, a hike with an objective and a reward at the end, in this case, a waterfall, I, I, it, it, it's an easier sell to children than, mm. you know, let, we're just going out for a hike or, or we're just going backpacking. Mm. We're, we're going to see a waterfall. Sure. And, and kids, kids will certainly latch on to that idea. Yeah, well, good job there. I, I wanna ask about uh, the process of, uh, you know, how much, it, to me, it seems like a whole lot of research went into this book. You, uh, I, how many waterfalls do you, do, you, do you have that off the top of your head? Well, there's, there's over a hundred in the guidebook. Uh, yeah. There's about 90 that are detailed extensively with, um, with, with hiking directions, access directions, and, uh, and, and, and a, a picture and a description. But throughout the book, it, it notes some additional waterfalls that you might find along the way or, or a couple a couple spots that are maybe a little farther and harder to get to and, mm -hmm. and uh, so you know if you've crossed all these off here's a couple more ideas. <laughs> so. so talk about the research and uh, I, I'm assuming that you hiked into all these? Uh... Every single one of them yeah yeah okay. I went to every waterfall in that book uh, did most of them well probably about half of them with my kids uh, yeah. who were six and eight at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of research it was it was a lot of nights scouring resources like trail societies and, and tourism sites, um, trail apps, geocaching apps, uh, backroads map books, other hiking guides to, to compile the list that eventually made up the guidebook for the region. So, so we're talking from the Alberta border to the Okanagan Corridor, Highway 97, to the Trans-Canada Highway to the U.S. border. So a p pretty broad area mm -hmm. in, in southern B.C. And, uh, and, and so, so there were, when it started to come time to go hike to all these waterfalls, there were, there were certainly long days. There were nights spent up Forestry Road sleeping in my truck. Um, mm -hmm. There were days where I was trying to hike to four or five in a day, um, especially days that I, I didn't have my kids with me. Mm -hmm. um, just to put it all together in, in, a, t in a timely matter and, mm -hmm. and, um, and prepare the manuscript for the publisher. So. Sure. So from your perspective, what is the magic uh, behind a waterfall? Why, why is it such a wide appeal to people? Why do people love waterfalls? I guess that's the question. Yeah, well, I, I, think, I think going back to, to having that reward is, um, it, it, it is a big one. They're, they're visually captivating, they're hypnotic, um, and I, as, as Adam Sawyer would say, the, my, my friend who wrote the foreword for that book, um, mm -hmm. if you really want to go down the rabbit hole and start mm -hmm. talking about negative ions and things like that, there's a whole other mm -hmm. conversation to be had. But um, I don't know if we have that much time. So. I, I wouldn't even know where to begin. But, um, 
but yeah, there, there's, there's some magic there. I think, you know, they, they change from, from day to day, from season to season. You know, you can, well, one day a waterfall can be kind of on, on life support and down to a trickle, and the next day it can be, be surging after a rainfall. Um, they, they come up and down with the seasons. In the winter, they'll, a lot of these will freeze over completely they'll be gushing in the springtime and then slow to just a trickle in, mm. in the, by the end of the summer. So uh, there's kind of that ephemeral aspect where, where you know, the seasons change and, and, and life is changing all, all around you. And, right. and there's, yeah, I mean, we, 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 could, we could have all kinds of conversations about, uh, about the reward of a waterfall. And, mm -hmm. but, yeah. And the great thing about it here in the Kootenays, uh, in, in our region, the Rocky Mountain uh, Trench here, uh, there are just sort of an endless supply of uh, various waterfalls that, that people can hike into. And I know that you've documented a hundred or so, but I, I have a feeling that there's a whole lot more out there too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you could, you could wander up any drainage in the mountains, any valley, and, and find small waterfalls that you're not going to you're not going to find in in guidebooks or mm -hmm. or trail apps there mm -hmm. the the thing about living in the mountains and especially when you know we, we have these seasons where in winter they get covered in snow and then that snow has to melt and, and go somewhere mm -hmm. so uh, uh, I, I i would i would expect that there's dozens of waterfalls that are mm -hmm. undocumented and tucked into the far corners of of our mountain ranges and um and when yeah being surrounded by the the Rockies on one side, the Purcells on the other. We've got the Selkirks, the Monashies, the Caribous. I mean, we've got mountains all all around us. So uh, it, it's kind of only natural that we're going to be surrounded by waterfalls too. Right. Well, I know last year we were ca camping at uh, Premier Lake, and uh, we took a hike up to Canuck and Yankee Lake, and I, you know, hiking up the trail, and you know, you could hear a waterfall in the distance, and you know, I didn't even anticipate seeing a waterfall, and yet it was a spectacular. It was early in the spring, so there was lots of water in it. And it was, it mm -hmm. was really a neat thing to see. So sort of unexpected. So one of those unexpected yeah. treasures for sure. And something that you know maybe a month or two later would have been dried up completely. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, for sure. So let's talk about the process uh, of uh, publishing your books. So the first one that you put out, East Kootenay Rock, uh, that was a self-published effort. Is that correct? That was a self-published effort. Um, I did have a lot of support from the climbing community on that project, so um, had the chance to to walk the crags and the climbing areas with climbers. Um, you know, take photos, mark up the climbing routes on on each photo, and then have have them double check and triple check the information, and and making sure we were getting the the, the root grades. And, and compiling all that information. Um, working with a printer specifically was definitely a learning experience. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I, that is, it is the big difference. I mean, that, mm -hmm. it's certainly not a, a literal masterpiece, that's for mm -hmm. sure, it's, it, it, it's information. Well, yeah, it's presented in, an, in a very concise way and I, you know, obviously a very targeted audience as well. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they'll, they'll appreciate the detail that you go into. Uh, the Waterfall book, uh, Waterfall Hikes, uh, published by uh, a publisher out of Banff, is that correct? Well, Rocky Mountain Books, which is now based uh, in Victoria, okay. but yeah, formerly used to be uh, Tony and Jillian Defern out, mm -hmm. of, out of Banff. And, mm -hmm. and as Rocky Mountain Books has grown, um, and they, they publish m numerous books throughout the year, spring mm -hmm. release and a fall release, uh, the, 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 the company's growing, the, the need for marketing and social media. Uh, they have a really strong editing team, they have a really strong design team, and all those elements uh, have come together to make Rocky Mountain Books are arguably one of the foremost guidebook publishers, especially mm -hmm. in, in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. no, they, and they do a tremendous job, and uh, you know, to your credit and their credit, you know, your book presents itself so nicely. It, 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 really does catch your your eye and that's that's really important in a very competitive book market these days so. yeah and 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 most mostly to their to their credit um, w working with a team of professionals mm -hmm. to create a, a perfect <clears throat> excuse me a professional book 
um, I, I, I can take very limited credit for what that actually looks like. And So you've got 100 waterfalls. Uh, were, were you at 90 and you were scratching your head and saying, I got to come up with 10 more? Or, or how, how did that process work? No, the list was kind of the list. Uh, there were, you know, it, from, from the time I started researching and, and, and compiling kind of a database of waterfalls, it just so happened to be about, about 100. And, and as you um, went out and, and explored some of these places, some got, some got cut loose, whether the access was just too difficult or there were a couple where it, it, it was just a bushwhack to get to. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, I wouldn't take my kids on this. I'm mm -hmm. not going to drag them through the alder in the forest trying to get to, you know, a, a relatively benign little waterfall. So we definitely punted some from the list. Um, so you wanted, wanted easy access or, or decent access to the waterfall? Yeah, that was, that was the idea, you know, for, mm -hmm. first and foremost, was to, to make it really user friendly. Um, and, uh, and anytime you're getting off trail and trying to communicate directions off trail, you're just gonna, you're gonna end up with a mess there. So mm -hmm. uh, the more that we could stick to um, very specific and detailed accesses and and trail descriptions and things like that. It it just makes that book more user friendly, and um, and and the last the last thing we want is for parents to drag their kids out and have an epic mm -hmm. um, trying to get to a waterfall. That, right. well, that's uh, yeah. probably doing something wrong at that yeah. point. <laughs> uh, yeah, you want it reasonable, and you want everybody to enjoy the experience, right? Uh, yeah. More than anything. Yeah. yeah. So 100 waterfalls uh, took you a couple years, I think you said, to put everything together. And yeah, from start to finish, it was it was two and a half years from submitting a proposal for the manuscript uh, to having a finished product in hand. Mm -hmm. um, so two busy summers of hiking to lots of waterfalls, mm -hmm. and uh, and then crunching through the last winter there to prepare the manuscript, and and uh, then the manuscript get submitted to the team at Rocky Mountain Books. We work with their, their publishers who were phenomenal and kind of the, the echelon of professionalism. And, and when the editing is done, uh, they bring in their, their book designer and, uh, and it all get, gets put together, so. Cool. Um, one of the favorite pages in, in your book is towards the back. And I'm not sure why you put it in the back, but uh, it's, it's... If anyone reads that far, right? <laughs> uh, but it's uh, sort of Steve's uh, favorite list of all things uh, related to waterfalls and hiking and, and so forth. And you, you, you sort of rate or, or, or talk about your, your favorite mm -hmm. waterfall yeah. hikes and so forth. So uh, what, what, do you remember what number one is? Well, like, like the, the climbing, it's, it's really hard to, to, pick, uh, to pick a favorite. There were... I mean, there were lots of spectacular waterfalls. The, the, one of the ones that stands out to me was, uh, it, it, it's a waterfall near Salmon Arm, um, Margaret Falls. It was one that I kind of picked up very late in my, in my research. I think I had, I think it was the second year and as, as I was about to go out to the Okanagan, trying to make sure I had a relatively complete list of the waterfalls in the Okanagan, um, Margaret Falls was one that kind of crept up on me late. Mm. I, I, I don't know why, um, but I didn't really have I didn't really have much for expectations. I didn't know really. I, I, I was a little unprepared for it, and and as I started the the hike, you kind of go into this this narrow, dark little canyon, and there's a series of of hand built wooden bridges over the creek. And this trail kind of snakes through the canyon, and then, and then there's a catwalk that goes out over the creek, and you don't actually see the waterfall until you step onto that catwalk and turn and face the waterfall, and and it was it was gorgeous. Just mm. I had the place to myself. It was late in the evening, and maybe not the waterfall that stands out, but definitely the experience that stood out, because when you compare it to other big waterfalls like Twin Falls or mm -hmm. Takaka Falls uh, or Helmet Falls, you know, s some, of the, some of the tallest ones in the country, mm. you know, those would be obvious picks for what's the most spectacular waterfall. But uh, yeah, for me, one of, the, one of the most spectacular ones was Margaret Falls in, in Harold Provincial Park. And oh, cool. 
Um, Last year we had we stopped at uh, Fletcher Falls, just uh, south of yep. uh, Caslow, and I noticed it's in your, it's in your book. And uh, you know, I, I agree with you. It's just uh, it, it was almost like you described in, in this particular case. You know, you walk down this gorge, you get there, you're on the sort of the bridge, looking up at the waterfall, and, and you can't help but be impressed. It's 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 an impressive yeah. sight for for sure. So you're based in Kimberley. Uh, just give us a couple of your favorites that are close by, in Kimberley. Well. Yeah, Kimberly. I mean, we've we've obviously got Marysville Falls right in town. Uh, it's it's a couple short minutes right off the highway through through Marysville. Um, it, it's probably one of those ones where if you're spending a week in a week or a weekend in Kimberly, it's probably one of the ones that you're you're gonna see. Mm -hmm. um, Meacham Falls up near St. Mary Lake. It's it's a little trickier to get to. You've got about eight kilometers on a forestry road, but it's a very short hike to a really really pretty waterfall mm. and and you can generally get in there with a car mm. uh, you don't need you don't need a truck or a high clearance vehicle uh, some of the forestry roads definitely tend to get rough mm -hmm. um, and and some do require the use of a truck to get to and I, I tried to make notes of that in the book if, mm. if, if the access is difficult or you need a truck uh, or something a little higher clearance um, you know just to make sure that people aren't getting into trouble but mm. uh, Meachin Falls is uh, Kind of a little classic, and you know, a, a little off the beaten path a, a, a bit, and, and then, uh, and then another one near Cranbrook here, which I would say is probably becoming the most poorly kept secret around, is is Lumberton Falls or Moye Falls, mm -hmm. uh, depending on which day of the week it is. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, same thing. It's it's a nice casual stroll. In low water, you can you can cross the Moye River with a with a pair of sandals or, or water shoes, and and as you. Uh, as you kind of follow along the river, the, there's this beautiful little waterfall just kind of rimmed by cliffs. And, uh, and it, it, it's one that I would say most folks in Cranbrook are, are now aware of and are making mm -hmm. a, point, a point to go see. Yeah, I had a chance to see uh, Mohi Falls uh, last June uh, when the water was high. Mm -hmm. oh. And but it's spectacular no matter how far away you are. It, 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 there's a lot of water coming over there. And, and that's another one that you can get to all year round. Um, and in the winter, that waterfall will just about freeze up completely, and mm -hmm. it takes on just a, just a whole new, a whole new perspective on on a waterfall when it's just a, a wall of ice. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it's very cool to see some of these places in the summer, and then to go back and see them in the winter too. Mm -hmm. We had a gentleman uh, as a guest on Talking Kootenay Books. Uh, uh, a month or so ago, and he, he's written a guidebook, hiking guidebook for the Elk Valley, and uh, he did, he mentioned a few waterfalls up there as well. Did you spend some time up in the Elk Valley? Yep, yep. We've got a few. There's a few around Fernie. Uh, most people would be familiar with Fairy Creek Falls, yeah. uh, tucked in behind the uh, the visitor center there. It's a short two-kilometer walk to a really nice small waterfall. Uh, Matheson Falls is becoming a very popular little hike to uh, to another small beautiful waterfall. Uh, and one that might not be on a lot of people's radar is Josephine Falls up in Elkford. Mm -hmm. uh, it's off the Fording River Road. Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a short stroll along the Fording River and uh, and just a big sliding cascade mm -hmm. and that. Uh, yeah, definitely thunderous in the in the springtime during mm -hmm. runoff, and one of the ones that slows down quite a bit late, later into the later into the summer. But I tried to fish that uh, above and below that uh, <laughs> Josephine Falls. Not a lot of success, but I've heard people have had success uh, on that river before. So. Well, I think it got its yeah. name. The the there was a this is Elkford folklore. I think I I think, but uh, uh, the Josephine Falls was named for a girl that caught what at the time may have been the largest mm -hmm. fish on, on, on that river or in that portion of the river. So mm -hmm. um, if you happen to catch one, I guess you're, <laughs> you're in good company there. Yeah. Uh, well, Steve, it's been great to uh, talk to you about your, your book and uh, congratulations on your success. Just before we wrap it up, uh, you know, we alluded to the, uh, in our introduction that, you know, you're an adventurer, uh, extraordinaire and that you've, you know, you've hiked uh, some pretty uh, awesome uh, hikes and, and adventures. Um, when you're out to, in the wilderness, uh, you know, wh why does it mean so much to you? Why, why, why do you, why would you take a hike from, say, Kimberley to Rogers Pass or, or, or whatever? What, what's the sort of the motivation behind that? 
That, that one was a little different. That one was, oh man, that, I mean, a, it, 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 was a, it was a dream. Uh, that was one that I spent the better part of a decade planning. And when I finally roped someone into doing it with me, which was kind of the last piece of that puzzle there, um, it, 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 it really was a dream come true. But that one, the, the logistics of planning something like that were, were very detailed. Um, we had a, a very specific route. We had to plan alternatives to that route. We had to plan food drops and caches along the way. We had to have exit points if conditions went sour. Um, and as it happened uh, that year when we were, when we were taking it on that trip, uh, the backcountry was closed because of the wildfire hazards. So we were eight days into that trip. We were notified on a, on a satellite messenger that, hey, hey the backcountry's closed and you're probably going to have to figure out a way to get out. And, um, and my, my wife did a bunch of work behind the scenes for us. She was able to get in touch with the, with the wildfire service and the Ministry of Forests. And we did end up getting permission from them to, to continue on the trip, e even though this full backcountry closure mm. was going on around us. But um, that, that one is, it, it's not one that I'd be keen to repeat. Mm. That yeah. it, it was. So that was sort of the, the uh, achievement of, uh, of your hiking career almost. Yeah, I mean, I certainly hope there's going to be more highlights to come, but uh, uh, that was one that after, after years and years of planning and, and just, just always being on my mind, it, 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 was, it was nice to um, not only take on something that had never really been, tr never been done before. I shouldn't say mm -hmm. it hadn't been tried because that's where we got our inspiration mm -hmm. from for that trip was from a, a, a group of guys who uh, set out to do that one and ended up having to piece it together in, in three smaller trips to, mm -hmm. to make it work. And, and so what we wanted to do was to make that entire trip on foot in the summer and, and complete something that A, hadn't been done before, but B, was straight out our back door. Yeah. Um, so from Kimberley to Rogers Pass. I, I had the pleasure of seeing your presentation on that a few years ago. And oh, thank yeah, you. Pretty, pretty spectacular for sure. How did your family handle that? Uh, it, <laughs> They were really supportive. Okay. They, they knew that this was something that had been on my radar for a long time. They really did get behind me. I got a lot of support um, leading up to and during the trip. They helped with, with food drops. Uh, we tried to communicate, you know, at, at least check in daily with, with mm -hmm. a satellite messenger. And they, they, were, they were in the loop of, you know, our, our progress and how things were going and, and how we were holding up. But, uh, um, it, it is tough being away. We had, uh, my kids were, were young at the time. They were, they were five and seven and to leave them for almost a month mm -hmm. uh, and to leave my wife alone with them for almost a month. So she deserves probably more of the credit for, for the success <laughs> of that trip than, than I do. But uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that was a memory for sure. Yeah. So I just uh, want to ask you about future projects. Uh, anything in mind? There, well, there's always a project in mind uh, from, from some of the more kind of the outdoor adventure stuff. There's, mm -hmm. there's always objectives and, and things you want to climb and do. I, I, I try not to talk about my plans too much until I have the results to show for it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, but it's suffice, suffice to say that you're working on something? <laughs> yes, yeah, there's both, there's both outdoor adventures in the works and there's also books in, in the works currently. Yeah, so. good. Well, based on your success with the waterfall hikes, uh, I look forward to seeing that. Thank Thanks, you. Steve. It's been great to have you as a guest on Talking Kootenai Books, and congratulations uh, on the, being on the BC bestseller list, and uh, really uh, a tribute to all the hard work that you put into that book. Thank you. This has been Talking Kootenai Books, and my name is Keith Powell. Mm -hmm.